How's it going guys? Dev here. Bringing you Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. I got this today, so... Yeah. Alright, new game. Please enter your name. I'm gonna go... Dev. In. Cause that's my name. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. The gr that girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. I know a few people like that. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha, ah, ah, uh, says Sayori. I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, uh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Davin. I know. That's the point. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. Hang on, I need a, like, uh, a feminine voice for Sayori. What's a good feminine voice? Uh, I don't know, I'll give her a stereotypical feminine voice. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you didn't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled for, with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Davin, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting on, I mean wait, getting by the likes to get getting by on the average while spending li my li my little my getting on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Sayori seems pretty cool. She seems like someone I know. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. I think I fell asleep in class. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori, what are you doing here? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's gonna make you late to your own club, Sayori. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. No. What? Well, that you could come to my club. 
I wonder what Sayori's club is gonna be called. There's gonna be something funny like the meat beat the meat beaters club. Sayori. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie. I don't wanna go to the meat beater club. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. I'm pretty sure that Sayori is illiterate, but that's besides the point. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title, Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. I just hit my foot against my desk. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep, Sayori. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! Ah, oh, Sayori is happy. That makes me happy. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh, I glance around the room. Girl one, welcome to the, uh, what's her voice gonna be? <clears throat> welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Siori always says nice things about you. Uh, what's, uh, seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Uh, this is too many voices. Ah, oh, Davin, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Hey, you don't have to say that twice. Oh wait, no, the expression is you can say that twice, but that's besides the point. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first-year student. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, don't, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. So this is Yuri, Natsuki, Sayori. Yuri seems like the kind of person who always gets the good grades. Ah, well it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Davin. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Davin. We made room for you at the tables. You can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little... Oh, wait. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little too excited. How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. 
The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute. I had no idea you were so good at making, baking, Natsuki. Heh, <laughs> well you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouthful and I was already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? Finally, bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for, y y you know, you, dummy. Alright, alright. I gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a, key a, a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I'd probably spill it on it. Ah, I guess. Heh <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's a... Uh, uh, what are these characters' voices? I'll just give them all the same voice. Uh, you watching the video, comment down below what voice you think would fit each character. And I'll probably continue that. Whichever one gets the most likes. For now, I'm just gonna make them all the same generic female. That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. I'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president, uh, uh, as president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity. Pub, 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 did I say publicity? Pub, publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also- Yuri also nods in agreement. But I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new one. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Eh, everyone enthusiastically agrees. Hey, all four of them are on screen now, nice. Natsuki, Yuri, Sayori, Monica. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So Davin, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. 
I'm not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her, li her, her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with the rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. I keep getting the voices mixed up. They're all the same. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. It's real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ah, uh, I hate... Ah, uh, I hate horror. Oh, what's... Th oh, why... Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? But what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Yeah, your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just about as cute as you are. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write down your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Ah, oh, Yuri's embarrassed. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. What's your idea? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Mm. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Davin? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the whole time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... but... I'm sorry, I thought. <laughs> Daffin. You all... I... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. If this was me in real life, I'd probably say yes to. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Siori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. 
If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super peeved. And that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Aw, oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Devin, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Atsuki clean up their food. Hey Devin, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Siora and I never walk home together because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? I'm gonna make it work one way or another. I mean, I'm not giving this up for anything. Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. I, if you know me, then I'm, I think it's pretty obvious which one I'm gonna choose. But stay tuned. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. This isn't realistic, I'm not procrastinating until the last second. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think of your, you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Okay. If it's not obvious, I like Yuri the most. So, uh... I thought that was gonna be Yuri. Uh, existence. Unrestrained. Extra... Uh, philosophy. Uh, misfortune. Okay, breathe. Uh, massacre. After image. Uh, covet. Eternity. Incongruent. Melancholy. Agonizing. Intellectual. Infinite. Oh, she liked that. I like Yuri the best if it's not obvious. Uh, broken. Okay. I, I just clicked twice for some reason. Hi again, Davin. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Davin. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Maybe you di making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you, could, you, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Devin always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Davin can become good friends too. <clears throat> Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Don't worry, I'll be Yuri's friend anytime. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori! Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal with- Oh, uh, 
Siori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Ah, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess, I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. Is it the Communist Manifesto? I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is running, rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah... Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled, Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by those people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately who choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Davin? I'm a fan of... Everything you like. No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Again, I know people who act just like this. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, there may not to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. 
I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing feel, fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. Oh wait, that's me, not your... That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. Ah, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, next to you, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Ooh. Sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Ah... Uh, here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then I hold my book more between the two of them. Ah... Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Yeah, your boy Davin knows how to lay his game out flat, don't he? Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page, and Yuri slides it under her thumb and flips it to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? I mean, <clears throat> are you ready? Uh... Let's turn the page. Ah, uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little longer. Hey, I see that smile. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Davin, that's probably, 
a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ah, uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that... Oh, wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I'm more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone. Oh, Monica showed up out of nowhere. I think it's about time we share poems with each other. We might not have had enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read it with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. Hey, she's feeling me. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori sits on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Uh, I'm gonna show my poem to Yuri first. And, uh... Might as well give her my phone number while I'm at it. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? Did, did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh, that's... I guess you're right. Why am I getting so nervous? Ah, <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment for com coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning, by example, and trying new things. Ah, oh, I'm yawning a little bit. Hang on. Ah, <clears throat> I yawned. I also hope that everyone in the club forgives- uh, what? I said- I thought it said forgives. That everyone in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can com- not, uh, 
my speech. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. What's that supposed to mean? I... I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. It's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short, was it? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost, Yuri? Uh-huh. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Davin. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I did suppose you only glance... Uh, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than just tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh, it, it, it's nothing really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah, if anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you, Yuri. You, you think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Davin. Ah, me too. Who should I show my poem to next? Ah, uh, Sayori. This is a good poem, Davin. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Davin. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know. Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun in here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Hey, by the way, I do voice acting if anyone's interested in that. Uh, check my about section of my channel. There's a link to my email. Email me there. You know, or leave a comment. Anything's fine. We'll work something out if you need help. If you need anything voice acting, I do it free. You know? Hit me up. Now you'll read my poem too, right? 
Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No, just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Monica. Hi, Davin. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Uh, I recommend a club beach trip with me invited. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Like I said, club beach trip with me invited. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah, <laughs> don't worry, Davin. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But if that's the sort of barrier, we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Davin. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. Ah, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism, unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply a analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure nowhere I'm I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. I don't think you understand the game's mechanics, Monica. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction that the sparkle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? 
An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Oh, you're blind now. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. That sounds really cryptic. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ahahaha, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between the words and lines. But performed out loud, it could be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could see that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper, and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's good advice, thank you Monica. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright, Natsuki's the only one left, so let's show our poem to her. Devin, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Hold on, what's that supposed to mean? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer! Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'll tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. That's funny. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Oh, I'm yawning again. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then I make it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than it realized. Than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah. I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew! I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone... Ugh. Ah. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is just a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. 
my eyes laid on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is... cute. Cute? Did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try it that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually really liked it. I'm gonna go ahead and save my game real quick. Uh... Ah, uh, is my game saving? Alright, there we go. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Davin did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless I, of course, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. And Davin liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki st suddenly stands up. Ah, oh, the music went quiet. Something's about to go down. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Davin appreciates my advice more than he appreciated... More than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you just that full of yourself? No. And if I was that full of myself, I'd deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh... Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Davin started showing up. N Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you from both of them. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Davin, she... she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Davin. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning to the most important them the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Davin? Um... Well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whoever I- whoever- whoever- uh, whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course that's going to be... Yuri. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. Wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't try to pick a fight just because someone else's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Mmm, I understand. Yuri. Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I... 
I see. I didn't notice that I... I... I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think that you should too? Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um... Sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do, to, to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? <laughs> she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. Ah, <sighs> everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as, you handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Davin. You're too kind. Thank you, Yuri. I'm thankful to have I'm thankful to have you as a part of this club now. Er, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing Atsuki said. About, you know. I would never do anything. So shameful. So. Eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, um, well never mind that. I'm going to go make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make it up for more than one person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Devin, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job. <sighs> yeah. Ah, yawning again. A better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Devin, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. Why Why does everyone expect me to hate everybody? I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you, though. Phew. You know, Davin, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Siori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Oh, I've got a feeling something's coming, I'm gonna save. Over right? Yes. Right there. Well, we'll just have to see what, what the future holds, Siori. I pat Siori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy- up. Oh, I skipped that by accident. Okay, yeah. Let's do this. 
Oh, it's poem writing time. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and end episode one here.